joined now by Yahoo Sportsbooks Ariel Epstein joining us. The Prop Queen is her nickname, uh, or I guess her name in the industry as she goes by. Uh, Ariel, uh, thank you for joining me on the week of my favorite holiday of the year. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, we're uh, we're thrilled to have you on. Um, I wanted to ask you originally just about the game. Um, when it comes to props, correlation I feel like is key for a lot of people. You want to kind of match your bets up with the way that you think the game is going. So I'm going to start there with you. Where do you handicap this game? Where, where do you see your advantages? Who do you like the most in the spread overall? The team I like the most on the spread is the Rams. I'm laying the four with them. You can get four. Don't have to lay four and a half. Mm -hmm. Lay four. I like them because I'm going more with the winning the game in the trenches motto more than the team of destiny motto, which is what the Bengals have been. And of course, they are very good offensively. They can slice and dice you whatever way they want. Their offensive line is just so bad. You're going up against two of the best defensive players, two future Hall of Famers, Von Miller and Aaron Donald. They're both coming off of opposite ends, and I just don't want to be on the side where they're attacking. Then you look to the Rams' offense. They also have so much talent, whether it's Odell Beckham Jr. or Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson. That's your X factor. And the Bengals have been really bad defensively in the middle of the field. It's why they rank fifth worst against tight ends. The Rams without their tight end Tyler Higby potentially is frustrating because Higby would have been one of my favorite prop plays. They still have Van Jefferson who can attack you with the deep ball across the field. With all of that said, that's why I like the Rams. Of course, they still scare me because they've been turnover prone in the past. The Bengals have been really good at making second half adjustments. I'm just going to go with what I feel is the better team, and that's the Rams all around. I agree with you wholeheartedly in this. I actually got the line at three. Briefly after the championship games ended, it went to three and a half, so I bought it down to three, which I feel like a genius right now. Um, the, the, the Rams beat the Bengals in every single aspect uh, when you when you handicap a game, right? Coaching, it, I guess they're even at quarterback, I would say, because Matt Stafford's uh, like longevity and stuff. But overall, I see this game going a lot like the Titans game. And the Titans game, to me, lands more on the fact that Tannehill played horrible in that game. If you have competent quarterback play like we expect out of Stafford, I don't see how Joe Burrow is going to overcome nine sacks again. I don't see how it's possible. I also was looking back at the games where Joe Burrow's faced defenses that are top 10 in sacks, meaning most sacks in defensive sacks-wise. And Burrow has struggled in those spots, turning the ball over in all but one of those games. He's faced eight or seven different teams that are top 10 in defensive sacks. Six out of the seven, he's thrown a pick. His offensive line does not help him. And his when you have two players that one with Von Miller being a reigning super or a Super Bowl MVP and Aaron Donald being defensive player of the year, it's gonna be tough for him to get rid of the ball. And that's why you see him throwing picks. That's why he's averaging 258 passing yards in those seven games against those defenses that tend to sack quarterbacks a lot. Whereas you look to Matt Stafford, he's averaging just under 289 passing yards a game when playing at SoFi Stadium this year. And he's not going to be pressured too badly by this Bengals defense. If anything, the Bengals are going to have to do what they did against Kansas City, and that's just make big stops in the secondary. That's where the Rams struggle. The Rams really have a bad secondary, and if Joe Burrow gets the ball off, then he's golden. The problem is he has to get the ball off, and he also can't be sacked five times, which is what happened. He was sacked five times at least in six out of or in five of those seven games against those top defenses, and the only ones that didn't get to him those five times, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I feel like the only people that are on the Bengal, like the Bengals pick right now for the people who love the Bengals in this spot, are, is kind of like the immature pick in my opinion. It's the we love the storyline. It's a, it's a cute storyline. It's it's this and that. It's back and forth, but. I'm just, I'm not looking at this game when it comes to a football, the way you just broke it down right there. When it comes to football, I'm not, I'm just, there's no, nothing that's going to convince me the Bengals are going to come out winning this game. I love the storyline. I love what they are. And I think they're going to be here to stay. But that doesn't mean that they're going to win this game necessarily. But again, uh, 2007, I would have told you the Patriots, uh, are, are, there's no chance of losing that game to the Giants. This is a weird game for sure. Um, so you, I, I take a sense you would agree. Since you handicapped the game that way, your props would more lean towards. Uh, Rams heavy offensive props, Bengals struggling defensive props. Before we get into the specific props, do you if you're placing a lot of props, right? Like, like a, you're, I'm assuming you're a big prop person during the game. 
Are we? Uh, are you a person that tries to avoid a lot of correlation? Are you? You try to mix it in a little bit so you don't get killed one way because you don't want ninety ten in the percentage wise either, right? You don't want to get slaughtered in this game. How do you? Uh, how do you approach this? I don't worry too much about correlation, especially in the Super Bowl. I'd rather break even on Super Bowl props than lose because I just bet everything on one side. I try to keep it pretty balanced. Now, the way that I approach it, which you'll see when we go deeper into the props, is I look to like Bengals kicker props or Rams total tackle props, longest reception props. I wrote an article for Yahoo Sports on Monday. In the article, it's the do's and don'ts of betting the Super Bowl. My biggest do's and don'ts, my biggest don't was – don't just go and bet. First of all, don't just go and bet because the number looks good. That's terrible. You have to handicap it. Second of all, I stay away from quarterback passing yards, rushing yards for running backs, and receiving yards for wide receivers. Those are the three main markets the books know the back of their hand. If I'm going to go bet overs, which is the public side, the unders tend to be more of the sharp side. All the sharps that I know who are really good at betting sports, they tend to bet a lot of unders in the Super Bowl. I'm just, just not, not a good unders better. I'm just not. And I'm, yes, they call me prop queen, but I've been betting <laughs> overs the entire time that they've been calling me this and no one's given me any flack because it's good. I just don't bet overs on mainstream props. If you do, you're probably going to lose because the books are going to be looking at those three main props. Yeah. I look at receiving yards props for tight ends and running backs. Two positions that no one really looks at receiving yards props for. When I look at quarterback props, I look at pass attempts. As long as the intent is there to throw the ball more, I'd rather look at pass attempts. I look to longest reception because these these secondaries are bad. I'm going to rely on Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, any of these deep threats. And I know Van Jefferson. I'm just saying deep threats in the league. Justin mm -hmm. Jefferson, I know he's on Minnesota. But I look for these deep threats for longest receptions more than I do for receiving yards just because when you have a situation like you're going to have this week with Jamar Chase up against one of the best corners in the league, Jalen Ramsey, I'm not going to try to bet against Jalen Ramsey an entire game based on quantity of receptions and receiving yards. I'm just looking for Jamar Chase to get open for one deep catch. That's all I'm saying. Interesting. Uh, do you see any value in the MVP bets uh, for Super Bowl MVP? I know the majority of the time it's just going to be quarterbacks a lot of the time. You get that rare occasion where someone stands out. Uh, one that I personally kind of, it might be a square play, so let me know if it is. Odell at plus 2,700. I just feel like the value's too big right there, and there's too much potential for him to go off in this game. But at the same time, I have a hard time not just taking Stafford, but the number's not good enough for me. The only team that I would bet any non-quarterback on would be the Rams. There's no way, unless Joe Burrow tears his ACL in the first quarter and throws three interceptions before that, that Joe Burrow doesn't win MVP if the Bengals win the Super Bowl. There's Absolutely. no way. Yeah. Absolutely. Then you look to the Rams. You've got a quarterback in Matt Stafford who, yeah, I mean, he's a favorite for the reason to win the MVP. He still is very turnover prone. If he somehow turns the ball over twice – then you have someone else on this team that can get it. Now, if it's low scoring, maybe it's a defensive player. If it's high scoring, it's going to be most likely the player that scores two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. if, whether that's Odell Beckham Jr. or Cooper Cup, it's going to probably be one of those two if it's not Matt Stafford. The only way I see a defensive player winning this game is if it's um, like, I know Aaron Donald's the highest liability, one of them for the Super Bowl. He's actually highest liability of all the Rams players for the books. It would have to be really low scoring, and the kickers would have to just have a field day like that 13-3 game the Rams played last time. Oh, I don't see that being the that case. Was. I don't what see that. See, I see this being an under just because of the way that the total has moved, and I'm not betting the under because it's. I, I'm not one of those people that likes to bet. Totals. Where's the fun in that? There's no fun in that in the Super Bowl, so no thank you. Yeah. This total is trending under, though, which makes me like the kicker props a lot, and if it is one of those games, then yeah, sure, maybe defensively someone comes away with the MVP. But the way that the Bengals have played defense, I, I mentioned this now for, what, five straight weeks because I'm a diehard Ravens fan, hence the Ravens helmet back here. <laughs> the Ravens had their third string quarterback in. This was the second game where the Bengals destroyed the Ravens because everyone on the Ravens was hurt and out with COVID. Mm -hmm. Their backup quarterback, Tyler Huntley, was out with COVID. The Ravens had about three days to practice with their third-string quarterback, and he put up 21 points and threw for over 300 passing yards against the, this Bengals defense. And this was the second half of the season, not the first half. 
even though the Bengals defense has been incredible at making second half adjustments, which is how they beat the Chiefs somehow, they still have to now face this Rams offense who has so many weapons. And that's why I just am not, I'm not so high on the Bengals. And also when you talk about these MVP races, yeah, I mean, I just don't see this being one of those defensively focused games the way that I did last year, where I liked Devin White to win Super Bowl MVP at 100 to one because you had to stop Patrick Mahomes. And that was the key to winning the Super Bowl in my mind. Unfortunately, his quarterback's name is Tom Brady. <laughs> um, Ariel, uh, I don't. I haven't seen anywhere yet where you've revealed this pick. So if you're hesitant to be the first to reveal it on here, I do understand. But are you a heads or tails girl at the start of the game? No, no, it's actually in my do's and don'ts of betting you the don't Super bet Bowl. The coin? Do not bet the coin oh, toss. Where's the fun in that? You're getting no. even odds. How can you here's not bet the, the coin toss? No, here's the thing. First of all, these books, these legal books are not giving you even odds. Most likely you're laying minus 103. I'm oh, not okay. sure if they changed it, but most likely you're laying minus 103. You're better off going and taking a side bet with a friend saying 100 bucks heads or tails, even money. If you're going to lay any juice on a 50-50, <laughs> you are an idiot. You have to pay. And just for anyone who's new to betting, if it's minus 103, you have to pay $103 to win 100. You uh -huh. could just pay your friend 100 bucks if you lose that coin toss. Don't Where's give the, the books the extra though? $3. Listen, I, I, I'm a big fan of the state of Nevada, okay? I'm just trying to help their economy out a little bit, all right? The extra $3 Ask Josh is not Allen kill what me. he would do. I'm sure it's going to be a great bet for you. <laughs> Listen, say, there's a problem, too. I've always been a heads guy. I've, I've, I've always been betting heads every... I've been betting the Super Bowl like eight years now. Don't tell my mom that. Uh, and I've always been, I've been betting heads, and heads is like one in seven in the last eight years now. I've only won one year, and it was last year. So it's really bothering me a lot. So I have like... A, I'm on a redemption tour, you know? Sunday's a big day for me when it comes to the coin toss. That's where my day starts off. I would rather play rock, paper, scissors. At least you have a, at least you have a one out of three chance. <laughs> okay, when we go to kicker props, then, uh, are you on the McPherson side of things or you're on the Matt Gay side of things? Do you like the more points scored prop or do you just like the over-under and just kicks in general for one guy? I like McPherson props more. I did actually bet for both of these kickers to have a field goal of over 35 yards, which was even money, which I liked a lot. Matt Gay just doesn't kick deep field goals, but he has kicked at least a 35 yarder in all of his home games this year. So I do like the play. Um, the thing for longest reception pro uh, longest re for uh, longest kick was that it's 47 and a half yards and Gay doesn't really kick that far. It's McPherson that would have to do that. Just telling you for the heads up, you have to be willing to know that McPherson's going to be the one to most likely kick that. The prop that I like, though, is also the over one and a half field goals on McPherson. He's 12 for 12 in the playoffs this postseason. He's had three straight games of this in the playoffs. And when he's been inside of a stadium, like he will be at SoFi in an indoor stadium, mm -hmm. three out of the four this year, he's had at least two field goals. I like McPherson a lot. Do you uh, do you see any advantage in the Rams playing this game at SoFi? I don't. I don't think it's much of a home field advantage. The ticket prices are like six grand. I don't think the really passionate, loud, rowdy Rams fan is going to be able to even afford going to this game. I think it's going to be a pretty corporate crowd, especially in LA. Are you seeing any advantage for the Rams playing in their home stadium other than getting to sleep in their own bed? From a fan perspective, probably not. It's just more about the comfort. That's what any player, a lot of players will tell you. And granted, there are so many times where the crowd noise does help. Don't get me wrong. It's not the biggest home field advantage like if you were playing at Lambeau Field. Or maybe I guess people will argue that's not an advantage anymore. So I probably have to get rid of that reference. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not like that for the Rams. It is comfort. You're you're still going to be using your same locker room, even though the Bengals are the home team in the Super Bowl. The Rams still get to keep their locker room. They're going to have their same routine. It's not even though the game's so big for the Rams when they pull up, it feels like coming home. Whereas for the Bengals showing up, it's like we're at the Super Bowl. I just see it being more of a mental factor than it is about the fan factor. Interesting. Um, For the QB props, uh, one hidden one that I kind of like, uh, That's uh, tell me if you like this or not. I, I don't think you're going to, but Joe Burrow to throw an interception is minus 130 on FanDuel right now. I kind of yeah. do like that because if they're going to be down in this game, they're going to be having to throw the ball, take a little more chances. And I think with the ball hawk like Jalen Ramsey being able to shut down Chase, that there's a better chance of an interception being being in this game. Do you like that prop? Is 130 a little too much for you to lay? How do you view that? No, I like it a lot. I mentioned this earlier. There's been the seven games where 
Bengals have faced the defense top 10 in sacks and he's thrown a pick in all but one of them. I really like it because he'll be pressured. He's going to have to force some throws because he's going to be pressured. Like you mentioned, going to target Jamar Chase, Jalen Ramsey right there. If he's pressured, has to throw off his back foot and Jalen Ramsey catches that underthrown football. It could be him. It could be anybody. I mean, he's going to have to force throws at some point. He's an underdog for a reason. He's got a huge defensive front coming at him from two different sides with two players that would scare the crap out of me if I was quarterback. I can see him throwing an interception in minus 130 is definitely not too much for me to lay. The most for me, I don't like to lay anything over minus 150. That's my threshold for prop betting. Interesting. Um, For the over-unders, um, you're not going to stay away from yards, which I actually agree with completely. Uh, and attempts, they're both kind of high here, 36 and a half. That, that is a little bit of juice to let out. The number's not too crazy, but I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about 36. They're both at 36 and a half, I'm seeing. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I guess I like the Burrow one more than the Stafford one. But either either way, Ariel, I'm not ultra confident in how high these numbers are. Are you? I'm not confident in them either. I looked at them. I looked at them a lot. I saw Stafford's drop to 35 and a half at one point, and then it came back up to 36 and a half. If there's one trending down, it's Stafford. I could see it, though, because they just, they announced that Daryl Henderson's going to be playing at running back. That means now you have three running backs in, in Los Angeles, and you're a four-point favorite. You get out to a two-touchdown lead, which is what I think the line was. I think the prop was for a team to lead by 14 and a half at one point in the game. Interesting. If that's the case, and the Rams, who are favored, are up by two touchdowns, you've got three running backs who can run the football really well. I could see Stafford having, or potentially just to try to avoid try to avoid turning the ball over. I could see Stafford starting to hand the ball off to someone who's maybe not Cam Akers because he does not help you with your turnover case. Mm -hmm. As for Burrow, if he is going to play from behind, he would be the side I'd lean to the over more on for pass attempts. What about um, the longest pass completion? I'm seeing 39 and a half. I think th that might be a good play on Stafford. Do you? Yeah, you could see that one definitely hitting against this Bengals team. The thing is that the Rams actually allow for – I have to pull it up actually real quick. Um, mm -hmm. I did have the stats on the averages for both of these teams and their longest catches allowed. Um, so the Bengals allow an average of 37 yards for a longest catch, and the Rams allow an average of 30 uh, – Actually, it's about the same. They're both around 37. It's just the average is 37.2 for the Bengals and 36.9 for the Rams. So they both allow very close to a 40-yard catch per game. The thing is that I always say to people, the biggest way to the, – the way people don't understand with handicapping these props and why you have to be successful or how you could be more successful betting them, you can't just bet – how much someone's done it recently, you have to bet how much the defenses have allowed recently. If you can get those two to match, then you're solid. Any other QB ones that stick out to you before we get to the receivers? Uh, any other QB ones? No, you hit you hit on it. I like the interceptions. I thought maybe under on Burrow passing yards. I just, again, hate betting unders, and Joe Burrow has absolutely torched bad secondaries. If it wasn't for the Rams being the fourth worst secondary in the league when it comes to betting against – or playing against wide receivers, I would have. That would be the only other way I'd lean, though, is for Burrow under passing yards. Just because of what I mentioned before, his averages um, when he's – uh, I can give you the averages. The averages are 258 when he is up against defenses top 10 in sacks. And when he's on the road, the average is just under 248 passing yards per game. Uh, Ariel, any receiver props you're looking towards here? Um, well, any longest reception ones you like? Most uh, um, most receptions, is that, is that one that you're a little into more? Or uh, straight up touchdown props? Uh, what do you lean more towards? My favorite longest reception prop is the over 17 and a half yards on the longest reception by Rams wide receiver Van Jefferson. He's gone over this number in 13 of his last 15 games. The only reason that he didn't go over this in the NFC Championship game was because he got hurt in the first half. He came back, played the entire second half. Every single ball that Matt Stafford threw at him was uncatchable. That's why I'm going to bet the over this week. He's my X factor for the Rams deep ball. Ooh, I like that a lot. Uh, touchdown props, do you see any value in those? Because I was looking at the odds. They're not very good at all. I think Cooper Cups to score a touchdown is like minus 170 or something <laughs> on most books. Uh, unless there's like a hidden player here that's like a secret dog, is there anyone that you like or are you not playing those? 
I usually don't play them. I do see some value in Odell Beckham Jr. I think he's in that two to one range. Otherwise, I would have bet Tyler Higby. He just hasn't been healthy. Maybe there's a long shot on the second string tight end. I don't typically bet those. I have a few friends that love them, a few people I rely on, and maybe I could use it in a same game parlay. I've been taking advantage more of those anytime touchdown props when doing a same game parlay, one game parlay, whichever book you're using. It's because they give out these promos for those $10 back on a parlay, win or lose. Just, I'll mm-hmm. throw a little bit on that. I stay away from those 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 profit boosts, though. Uh, those are just, to me, that they're... They're, they're screaming, everyone take them, and, and they know those things never hit for some reason. Like the books only put them out there because they know they're not going to hit. You know what well, I mean? Well, they're always parlays. So yeah. that's why I'm going to take advantage of a risk-free same-game parlay that I could create for myself as opposed to using the ones that they're essentially trying to throw at me to take. No, thank you. How much are you enjoying uh, legal sports betting in New York right now? You seem to be someone that would really uh, like that a lot. Oh, I love it. It makes my life so much easier. I was betting when I was living at my parents' place throughout COVID, I would drive to New Jersey 20 minutes and place my bets there. (laughs) Now that I get to just place them in the comfort of my own apartment in New York City, it's so nice. And taking advantage of live lines too is great. I loved that in week 18, I had this, it was the first week of live betting. Well, it was the first week of betting in New York. I said week 18, Best way to bet is that you knew that the Packers were going to start their starters and then they were going to bench them all by halftime. Go take the line. Let the Packers score. Let the live line move because they're all generated by a computer. Let the live line move on the Lions to 10, whatever it moved to. And then I grabbed the Lions live then. That's why it's so much fun to be able to go and live bet these things in New York and also be able to go and get a good number when it pops up. You couldn't do that if you had to drive 20 minutes to New Jersey. Exactly. Uh, you know, a lot of the offshore books don't have live lines at all. Not that I would have, not that I was ever gambling offshore prior to this anyway. But Ariel, uh, one last thing. Uh, Super Bowl watching wise, um, are you a big Super Bowl party person? Are you a bar and a Super Bowl person? I, I, for one, I'm not. I don't like Super Bowl parties. I like to be focused, dialed in on the game. Uh, my friends call me a psycho because I won't even eat during the Super Bowl. I want to eat like two hours prior because during the game, I want to be focused on everything that has to do with the game. I I may have serious issues, but I don't like bars for Super Bowl either. I don't want to be around people. I don't want, I don't want the Super Bowl party. We got people that aren't paying attention to the game. I want, if everyone's going to be there, everyone focus on the game or don't be there at all. How how do you, how, how is your viewing a Super Bowl experience go? This year is going to be the first year that I'm watching the Super Bowl at a bar. I'm doing it because See, when when you're a guy, and I know this might come across sexist, but it's actually it's just realistic. When you're a guy, most of your friends are very into the Super Bowl. There's no side chatter aside for what's going on in the game. That, and I prefer that, as sexist as it may sound. Right. When I'm you're not, a I'm not, girl, I don't want to watch a Super Bowl to flirt. I want to watch it. That, that's not my social hour. That's my football no. hour. As a girl, it's painful. I mean, to sit there with <sighs> friends, because the guys really don't mix with girls a lot, like when it comes to apartment parties. It's usually separated. Girls and boys watch separately. Mm-hmm. When you go to a bar, at least, you can intermingle with everybody. And I'm going to be at a bar with a couple of friends who are very into the game. I made sure the bar has the broadcast on during the game. Then it turns to music and commercials. I would rather be doing that with my friends so that they could side chatter and I could watch the game as opposed to being stuck in an apartment with three friends that are going to eat like carrots and ranch and like just (laughs) side chatter here and there and then ask me what's going on. At least they can side chatter, do what they want, have some drinks, and I can watch the game while I could also maybe find some people who care about the game in a big setting. If you watch the game with people who aren't big sports fans too, this is a perfect opportunity pregame to just explain how football works briefly to them. Don't you don't because you don't want to have to do it during the game, right? You no, don't they ask the, anyway. They ask anyway. You don't want the big. No one likes the big play that happens and the toe drag and they're reviewing it and they're inc- and you're saying the word inconclusive and they got a bunch of people at the party like, what does that mean? What happened? What? No, the I don't worst, have time for the that. The worst now is that people want to understand betting and they oh, think God, that they're going to learn it in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, I can't. It's, it, that's okay. not gonna happen. I don't understand. You know what's? It, uh, call me ignorant. I don't understand how people don't comprehend like how how basic things work in betting, like how over unders work and stuff. You know how like when you ask when someone asks you to explain it and uh, what does over mean and you go over fourteen and a half. What does that mean? It's it, that's just numbers. That's not gambling. It's just over fourteen and a half. It's not. Yeah, the totals are the totals and props seem easier to explain than 
spreads. Spreads are definitely complex for people, and the payout part of oh it. Oh my is god, they, it can't. Uh, one last thing. So now you're watching the Super Bowl at a bar. This is an interesting scenario for you. So if you get approached by a guy at a bar, it's got to be a pretty big curveball for him when when you know more about the gambling lines than he does. You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't know how a guy's gonna react to that when when because a lot of guys when it comes to girls they don't like to talk about the gambling at first because then it, it may be something wrong message and stuff like that. But then when you start getting into the gambling and you're like, yeah, well, you know, I love Van Jefferson's uh, over over total. Uh, the reception went up. What is that going to, you know, that, that's an interesting, how do you approach that? I had that happen to me in the wild card round, I think it was. It okay. was either wild card or divisional round where I was at a bar, the Ainsworth here in New York City, which is a great sports bar. I was watching and my friend was late to coming to meet me. So I was just kind of sitting there by myself with my drink in my hand and the guys next to me are watching. It was the Bucks game. Okay. And oh, I know it was the it was Bucks Eagles. Mm -hmm. I said and I start clapping because the Bucks went up by a million early and I'm just clapping away and cheering Good. to you're, myself. You're that, you're that psycho too that could be by themselves. Yeah, by myself at yeah. the bar <laughs> clapping every time something good happens that's like my side. So guys look over at me and they go, oh, are you a Bucks fan. I thought at first he was going to say, are you a Brady fan? Because that's like the typical thing to ask mm -hmm. a girl. Yeah. No, he asked if I was a Bucks fan. I said, no. I <laughs> laid the points with the Bucks. And he looks at me and he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> Immediate trigger. Like, <laughs> Yeah. And you can't say I bet the Bucks. You have to say the terminology. Oh, yeah. It really yeah. throws them for a loop. And you go, I laid the points with the Bucks. They go, oh, what? Well, I was gonna, dropped. Oh, you could start getting crazy with these guys. So I was going to lay the points, but I didn't like it. And then I was going to tease it down too. But I, I, you do, you could just start going crazy with the terminology. You'll, you could throw so many guys for a loophole. It would actually be like a fun, like reality show kind of thing. Right. You oh, film these guys that they have no idea that you're going to start bringing this terminology up and they're like, wait, what? It's like a, it's like a freeze for them. Right. Oh, a hundred percent. It's hilarious. I love messing with people whenever I'm out and people don't understand or know, obviously at first what I do. And then, mm -hmm. um, it's funny too, because I have a ton of friends and my sister included who people now have been talking a lot about betting. A lot of their guy friends will talk about betting. My sister will say, or my friends will say, Oh, that's my friend Ariel. And then they'll text me and they'll say, what should I say back? And then I tell <laughs> them what to say. Then they look like a genius until they eventually get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Ariel Epstein is her name. The prop queen is what she goes by from Yahoo Sportsbook. Uh, Ariel, I really thank you for joining me uh, so much. Enjoy the game.